Alex Weil, number seven here this afternoon, is basically sponsored by a bike shop. And he was going up against a bunch of factory pros out there. The reason actually Alex got into riding bikes was because he, as a teenager, sort of 16, 17 year old, he was hanging out at school with no sport after school. And I said to him, if you don't choose a sport, I'm going to choose a sport for you. And he came home and he said, okay, he's going to join the bike team, but he has to have a bike and he has to be at the race on Saturday because the season had already started. Next day he comes home from school, he's borrowed a bike and another mum's going to take him to the first race. So off he goes to his first race, comes, I think next to last, I always think he was last, but he says he was next to last. But I've never seen a kid so happy. He's beaming from ear to ear. He loved the team, he loved the ride, he loved the mud he was in, he loved just every element of this sport. Alex was an employee of mine back in 2008, racing high school NICA cross country races, always driven to win, super dedicated to training, way more dedicated than anyone else, so much that I couldn't tolerate him needing weekends off to race all the time. So I sponsored him as a cross country racer instead, and he just started going for it. Fast forward, he's slaying it. He's racing U23, doing super well, had some setbacks, always persevered through the back injuries, and now he's racing in the pro circuit Alex has made his dream come true and he's going to Worlds, super pumped. We went to Nationals and he crossed the cross country race and finished in sixth. His mom and I, after the race, we were just like so proud of him. It was just such a crazy moment to like see him place and get that type of a result. And that race you were able to see just how strong he was up against these really big top competitors that he looks up to and seeing him get a result like that was just amazing. We were both in tears. This year for Alex seems to have been a really different year. Everything has come together. His, his head game, his fitness, his diet, his just ability to ride that bike. Just to see him placing in the top 10 in three national championships that he's been involved in has just been wonderful. This year has been a dream year. It's been way beyond expectations. I was shooting for one UCI point, which I didn't get in the first half of the season, but during the second half of the season, I accumulated 71 and qualified for my first World Cup. He's got to go to work. He has to get his ride done during his lunch hour, go back to work, drive home, um, and then somehow make time for me and his family. He does it, you know, impressively, but it can be a lot for one person. You, you make sacrifices, and always in the back of your mind, you're thinking, if what if I don't make it? What if all I, you know, what if all this is for nothing? He knows that it takes a village to get where you're going. And it's, it's always been really clear to me uh, that his love for his family, you know, he's always got his mom's efforts at top of mind. Um, his caring for his brother and his girl, Jennifer, um, that support him through and through, for the traveling, for the lodging, for the preparations. He knows there's these huge sacrifices that those people make so that he can reach his goals. He definitely is having a benchmark year as far as results go. This year is the culmination of all the work that he's done over the last five years. If you compare what we were expecting at the beginning of the year to where he ended up, totally blew all those expectations out. You know, beginning of the year, if you had asked me if I thought he was going to be doing a World Cup, I would have said those chances were probably slim for that year. The last year and a half has been really positive and he stayed focused and he's kind of kept this vision of this bigger picture that he's been working towards. For mountain biking, the World Cup is, is the, the pinnacle of sport. The only thing higher than a UCI World Cup is World Championships and the Olympics. The course here is super technical, nothing like we have at home. It's a lot of rocks and roots, about seven or 800 feet of climbing per lap. So you kind of get a super hard technical course that's gonna fatigue you, and then you have super steep, short, punchy climbs that are also gonna fatigue you. So by lap six, it's gonna be interesting. The start was as hectic as, as I've been told. We hit the Beatrice for the first time and everybody was walking down it, so I opted to take the beeline. At that point, I started to feel like you know, I just I didn't have very much go, so I had to swallow my pride a little bit and let some people go. By lap three, I was just, just really suffering. 
I flatted going into the second half of lap four, and I must have caught it on a rock and burped it on the Beatrice. Went through the tech feed zone, but I was thinking about the 80% rule. I was like, next time around, I need a wheel. Went around the next lap, I had a completely flat tire and had to get it changed. The course was fantastic. I mean, it was such a fun course to ride. Like even when I was suffering, it's like I was always looking forward to riding the Beatrice and riding the rock face and rocking, riding through all the rock gardens and stuff. It was just a super fun course that really brings out what mountain biking is. Just the atmosphere was phenomenal. Every time you go up that switchback climb, everybody's yelling Olay at you. I got pretty close to last in the race and very humbling to see how fast those guys are. You know, you, you know how hard you work and imagine how hard they have to work to be as fast as they are now. Kind of a flashback to my first race when I raced NorCal for the first time. I got last place or second to last place and that only made me hungry to race more and hungry to train. I mean, this is the same situation but on another level. It just makes me hungry to come back for more next year.